Well, good morning. I'm so excited because this is the first time that we are getting to have the alternative worship service as one collective experience. This has been part of the heart and vision as we started dreaming and praying and scheming about this space. An opportunity for us to holistically have a service where we get to journey together and exploring how God is inviting us. So much of the vision and the heart between the space, which we'll keep working on and co-creating together post COVID as well, is that we wanted to create a space for faith in the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer in a world that has come of age. Many of you know what this means, even if you don't exactly know what it means. You know what it means to have come to a point where maybe some of the old ways of doing church or some of the language just, it doesn't connect in the same way, or maybe it hasn't answered the questions that you actually have needed it to. That's okay. We wanted to then come together in that space to both continue to follow in the long tradition of saying, what does it mean to be people of faith? people who are transformed by the love of God. But also to recognize that the way that God shows up, that, that it's not just limited to a time like this on Sunday morning, that God is already speaking and working and has been in your life and in our world. And we want to come together to reawaken and reimagine and reconnect with the God who is and was and is present by living in our own skins and and in our own bodies and paying attention to the beauty of nature and the beauty of community and looking and finding and rediscovering a life and a faith that is real, that is filled with love and that changes us and the world around us. So welcome this morning. So grateful to be with you. And please let us know what you're thinking about. We wanna hear from you this morning is a time where we're gonna to consider together what it means to be gathered. So come on in, will you? I would also like to extend a warm welcome to everyone as you're joining us here on the first uh, alternate service. Uh, we're really excited for what God is doing in our community and what's possible as we reimagine this worship expression. There's a lot of reasons to be excited and one specific reason that, that I'm particularly excited is we are here in the pond room. This has been the place that has housed decades of memories, uh, connection, and, and growth for, for our youth. And maybe even some folks at home have fond memories of this room. So we're hoping to continue in that legacy, in that tradition of, of growing here in this place. I want to set the stage for today's theme. We're going to be exploring this idea of gathered in the spirit, just like in the traditional service. Uh, this, this thought of being open to what God's doing in the world. The reality that God still speaks and that we can be open to this story of how God is working and, and seeing how God sees um, for other people, ourselves, in creation. And honestly, as we think about the Spirit, uh, we need to recognize that we're continuing the timeless legacy of people having everything being changed uh, as they are inspired and moved by the Spirit. So today we're going to be spending some time uh, worshiping, reflecting, learning, and hopefully talking with one another as well. So join me as we explore being gathered in the Spirit. All right, this song is a David Ramirez song. It's called Find a Light. Um, we chose it because it's actually a very beautiful picture of this idea of gathering in the Spirit as you'll hear simply the invitation um, to find that light, to be in that light, whether things are going really well, whether things are really tough, um, whether we are close together or whether we are apart. I wish upon you peace, I wish upon you grace, I wish for less of what you want and more of what you need. I wish upon you an old life with a heart that stays young, an 
Most of all I wish upon you love I wish upon you true When all you feel is down I hope you know that an open mind Still knows when to shut things out I wish upon you a brave heart That will always rise above But most of all I wish upon you love You'll find the light. You'll find the light. You'll find the light. Yes, even in the darkness, you'll find the light. wish upon you an easy life I wish upon you hard times I hope you know that both joy and pain each need the moment to shine I wish you ears that are quick to listen that you're slow to use their tongue but most of all I wish upon You'll find the light. You'll find the light. You'll find the light. You'll find the light. Yes, he. You'll find the light. Yes, even in the darkness, you'll find the light. When Jesus first meets the woman at the well, she basically says to him, You know, your ancestors have worshiped over there in that mountain and mine have worshiped over here. Naming the ways in which we as humans so often designate certain places as sacred. Like God is here, God is not there. And part of what we are wanting to do as we worship together is to remember that all of the earth and all of creation is God's. And in fact, that's what Jesus says to the woman at the well, right? He says, the time is coming and is now at hand when the true worshipers worship in spirit and in truth. So on this morning, we want to remember together that the spirit and the light is always present and always shining. And that's why often we actually light a candle. It's a way of reminding ourselves to pause, to reflect, and to remember that the Spirit is with us and is in us. So let's just pause for a moment to breathe in and to pay attention to the God whose Spirit is already here and already in you. Let's pause and pray. God, for the ways in which your Spirit of life is all around and is in us, we give thanks. Might you grant us the courage to listen in and to open ourselves that we might be people who are gathered in 
your spirit and who then live from that place of life and love and light. Amen. I want to invite you to pause for a second and to think about a moment in your life where maybe you have been going along and you suddenly considered something from a different perspective. All of a sudden, there was an opening up. No, really, I, I mean it, pause. <laughs> you can even actually feel free to push pause. Take a minute, take a breath, and think about that. When was a moment in your life where you were opened up to see or understand something from a new perspective or vantage point? Because for me, these are examples of where the spirit is actually alive and bubbling up in us and healing us in ways that maybe we hadn't expected. For me, I know I've experienced that in so many different moments. I think about the ways in which I hadn't understood the story or the experience of being a person who was forced to migrate. But I, I was in El Salvador and getting to hear the stories of other people. And for the first time, it was like my eyes got open to consider like, they don't want to leave. This is their home, of course, but there had been a civil war and they had to. And it was like, yeah, Sarah, this is what it means to see the world from someone else's perspective. To me, that's a moment of spirit. Or I think about this summer and what it meant for so many of us who've grown up not in black skin, to wrestle with the pain of what does it mean to live in a world in which some of God's beloved children aren't honored or given the dignity to continue their lives because they're seen as dangerous. That awakening, that moment, that collective is God's spirit bubbling up, continuing to invite and breathe and bring forth into being a different world than the world that we know right now. So how about you? I see God in symmetry. I see God in make-believe. See God in a grand attempt to make something beautiful before for thy face. I see God in irony, the fragile angels within children's ears. I see God in a damaged girl, but you see God in ways I wish I could. You see God in ways I wish I Without instruction, you believe. Without container, do a listening framework. You see the Holy Ghost in broad daylight. I see. The reflection in your eyes. I see the reflection in your eyes. I see God in healing bones. Sanctuary of God. Baptism 
to recklessness Black or white or vivid color After a while it all runs together Our stained glass means nothing without As Andrew said earlier, we're, we're talking about being gathered in the spirit. What, what does that mean? It means that the community of, of people gathered together looking to see what God might do. And it's the spirit that's part of God called the Holy Spirit that leads, that guides, that directs. I want to talk a little bit about with that with you today. You know, uh, we're a congregational church. In, in true congregational tradition, it means that we're a non-creedal church. What does that mean? Well, there's a, a bunch of creeds, a bunch of written words that suggest this is what we need to believe to be a part of this community. The congregation that we're a part of suggests that we don't really need this set of creeds. In order to be a part of our congregation, you don't have to say, I believe all the things that you believe. Now can I be a part of your community? What you need to say is, hey, I want to I want to search for God with you, you like minded people. I want to be a part of this journey with you. If you say that, welcome aboard. We don't have all the answers. We haven't got it all figured out. And together we might get a better understanding of who God is, what who Jesus is, what God's spirit is all about. As I say, we're not a creedal church, but we have used the. Apostles' Creed, this very ancient creed, as a guide to what we think theologically. It's been a big help to us. It's, we use it with our confirmands. We use it in a variety of places. We even at times will recite it in worship. It's just a reminder of some of the important things that we need to think about as followers of Jesus. Well, there was a group of confirmation kids that were learning the Apostles' Creed. And so each member of the class had to memorize a little part of it. And together they were going to share the Apostles' Creed. And so they, they began together. And one said, I believe in God Almighty. And the next one talked about, I believe in Jesus, the Son. And went on to say, another one said, oh, I, I believe in the virgin birth. And I believe in sin. And I believe in death. And then there was this pause. And everybody kind of looked around at each other. They couldn't figure out what, where that awkward pause had come from. Then all of a sudden, one of the students said, oh, oh, the, the student who believes in the Holy Spirit, he's not here today. I thought about that little story, and I thought, you know, it's probably a good idea for us all, not just maybe one or two of us, maybe all of us stop and say, what do I believe about the Holy Spirit? What do I believe about the Spirit? Have you thought about that lately? I have, and I've learned some things. I've learned that through the Spirit, I can understand God better. I can experience God more intimately, and I can sense God's leading in my life 
because of this promised spirit in my life that I want to talk a little bit more as we go. In the New Testament, we find out that, that the Holy Spirit is kind of the third part of what we call the Trinity. <laughs> you know, the Trinity is something that has divided churches for a long time. What do we believe about God? This God who is experienced in three parts. God, the Creator, God, the Son, and this Holy Spirit that promises to be in each of us as we seek God. As a matter of fact, the gospel writer of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in the 14th chapter and several chapters after that, sets aside quite a bit of time in this gospel, this story about experiencing Jesus and what the life of faith was about. Sets aside a bunch of time, a bunch of space in this gospel to talk about the Holy Spirit. As you read through the gospel of John, it gets your attention that, hey, Maybe there's some things I need to know and things I need to understand if I'm going to be this follower of Jesus. Well, what can we know? What, who is this spirit? What, what role does it have in people who are seeking to follow Jesus? Well, one of the passages in John 14 says, I have said these things to you, Jesus speaking to his disciples, while I'm with you, but the advocate... Pay attention to that. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I've said to you. Oh, the Holy Spirit, according to the Gospel of John, is an advocate for us. Advocating so that we can best understand who Jesus was and who Jesus wants to continue to be in our lives. It bears witness. It testifies about Jesus and helps us to come into a deeper relationship with Jesus. This spirit is our advocate, helping us to understand, helping us to have more profound faith, to have a deeper belief. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself, talking to his disciples, said in kind of the last hours of his life on earth, said, you know, it's better that I go to heaven. It's better that I die and go to heaven so that God will send the spirit, this advocate for us. That's almost too hard to believe for me. I mean, Jesus, God in flesh, comes to earth, shows us how to live, does miraculous things, stands up against oppressive governments, stands alongside the most needy. It's better that we don't get to experience that firsthand. It's better to have this spirit. But that's what Jesus said. For that spirit will come and will dwell in you. If you're seeking God, if you're wanting to follow, if you love Jesus, the Spirit will come upon you and give you better understanding, guide you and lead you, be your advocate, be your support. As a matter of fact, Jesus really wanting to make the point of this role of the Spirit in the, the disciples' life tells them very clearly in this Gospel of John, don't leave where you are. Don't leave Jerusalem where they are. Don't leave until you get this spirit in a new way, this advocate. Don't go do the ministry that I'm calling you to do until you get this gift of the spirit, this helper, this advocate, this encourager, this spirit that will give discernment and wisdom and clarity. And so they wait and the spirit comes. And they go out and begin to do their ministry. In verse 8 of chapter 14, it says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. It suggests this idea that the Spirit really becomes a part of us if we invite it in. That's the promise that Jesus gave the disciples. Of all the promises that Jesus could have given, that's the one he gives them. He, Jesus doesn't promise them immediate success. Jesus doesn't promise them the absence of persecution or struggle. Jesus doesn't promise them good health or wealth. What Jesus promised was this in perpetual, empowering presence of the Spirit. 
and that like-minded people gather in that spirit might do miraculous things in Jesus' name. On Thursday mornings, I meet with a group of guys. We call it dudes and donuts. It's at 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. They get up to do Bible study with me. It's the best, one of the best things I do all week. We've been going through the book of Acts, which is kind of the history of the early church. And in that book, it describes this time when the Spirit comes upon the disciples and becomes the push that these disciples, these followers of Jesus need to begin to do their ministry. And you know, the Spirit, our helper, our advocate, continues to give us that push to, to, to direct us to where God wants us to be, to, to do the things that God wants us to do. And I don't know about you, but I can always use a good push now and again. When I get tired, when I get discouraged, when I get beaten down a bit, I sometimes need a push from behind to encourage me. One author tells this story in one of his books that several years before he had been invited by his friend to do this bike race. And he was thinking, I'm a little bit too old to maybe do a bike race. But his younger friend was like, no, you can do it. I know you can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Now, this young friend had been doing Pelotons before anyone else knew what Pelotons was. This was one of those superhero types young men. And he was like, you can do it. So he decides to do it. He even does a little bit of training. And, and the reason why he does this training, because he knows in the middle of that race, there's this huge hill. They call it the Killer Diller. And they know that that has wiped out a bunch of people from that race. The day of the race comes, they start off. And quickly, the race is divided between those who are competing and those who are just hoping to finish. And so this, this man who had taken the challenge was now left to himself, left to himself. And he's riding along, riding along, starting to curse the name of his friend until he gets to that hill. And now he's thinking to himself, as his thighs are burning and his breath is short and he's not quite sure if he's going to make it, he's thinking, I'm just going to quit. I can't do it. When all of a sudden, from behind, he feels this hand on the small of his back and this push that encourages him to keep pedaling, to keep going. He quickly turns and looks and here's his young friend who has already finished the race and gone around realizing he's probably going to need to come and help his friend, finds him on that hill and becomes that push, that encouragement to keep on keeping on. My friends, that's what the Spirit does for us in community. Sometimes it's this miraculous sense of God's presence that helps us keep going. Sometimes it's that smile and encouragement or prayer or word of encouragement from a like-minded person. But that spirit comes, gives us that push, and helps us to keep on keeping on. Keep on doing the work. Keep on being transformed in the likeness of God. Be more like Jesus. Keep on keeping on. Gives us the power to be the church, to be filled with love and, and grace and mercy, to do good works for God for the sake of the most needy. That spirit helps guide us, helps encourage us. When we want to quit, we want to give up. When we're not sure we're on the right path, that spirit comes, directed by God to lead us, to guide us. One of the ways we've seen that recently in the life of this church is through what we call the Blessings Initiative. This idea that we will set aside a million dollars in the life of this church to care for the most needy. Through the ideas and the inspiration of the Spirit in our members, 30 different ideas have come pouring in. We're trying to narrow it down to where those ministries that we would like to get more involved with will be. But God, using the community, gathered in the Spirit, using gifts, abilities, talents, resources to make a difference in this world. 
that gentle push to get out there in the world to do good for Christ's sake. That can happen in so many different ways, and we can be inspired in so many different ways to reach out beyond ourselves, to to do what we thought we couldn't do, to do what is most difficult, and maybe others would suggest we don't do. I don't know if you've seen the movie 42. I recently rewatched it. It's the story of Jackie Robinson, the first black American to play Major League Baseball. Why, I think you could probably imagine what that might have been like, how difficult that was, how much ridicule this man received as he tried to live out using his gifts that God had given him. There was a game in his home stadium in Brooklyn one night, and he made two errors at second base. This man who had no permission to make mistakes if he was going to succeed, and his hometown crowd turned on him. It must have felt overwhelming. He must have felt the weight of the world on his shoulders. When all of a sudden, a well-known Dodgers player, P. Wee Reese, walked over from his position and put his arm around Jackie Robinson. The, quiet, the crowd quieted. That act of solidarity, that act of you're not alone, I'm with you, made all the difference for Jackie Robinson. To finish that game, to continue his career, to do what he thought was impossible, and others would have said as well. The role of the Spirit is like that arm around the shoulder. I'm with you. I love you. I support you. I'm standing alongside you, helping you to experience the fullness of the life that God desires for you. If you didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit before I began today, you're, you're probably catching on why the Holy Spirit in our lives is kind of a big deal. It's not us trying to figure out how to best serve God and try to figure out what's right and what's wrong. We, we do some of that, but we have God in us promising to lead us. And in community, the Spirit works as well. As we share our ideas, as we share our abilities, as we share our resources, as we share our love and our support. We're the church. God at work in the world. Caring for what God cares for most. Well, you know, if we're going to continue to be the church, if we're going to continue to be a community that is inviting others into our midst, well, we're not going to be able to do that on our own. We're going to need this spirit, this promised helper, this promised advocate, this gift from God to dwell in our midst, to dwell in our hearts and in our minds as we put our lives together for God to use today and in the days to come. Thanks be to God who never leaves us or forsakes us. And we know that because of the spirit that gathers us together. Amen. This next song is Light On by Maggie Rogers. And for me, this song relates to gathering in the spirit um, because sometimes uh, we can gather with, by the spirit um, in a more personal way um, with ourselves. And for me, the lyrics in here, um, Maggie talks a little bit about struggling. And I don't know about you guys, but um, I've struggled a little bit this year here and there. And so for me, it's nice to know that um, the light is always on, right? The spirit is always there. Hope is always calling. Um, we just need to be there to, to call it back. Would you believe me now if I told you I got caught up in a wave? Almost gave it away. Would you hear me out if I told you I was terrified for days? Thought I was gonna break. Oh, I couldn't stop it, tried to slow it all down Crying in the bathroom, had to figure it out With everyone around me 
saying you must be so happy now oh if you keep reaching out then i'll keep coming back and if you're gone for good then i'm okay with that if you leave the light on Jeff said earlier, as a congregational community, it's not about all thinking the same thing, but it's about who gathers us and why we gather. We're gathered in the spirit to be people of life, to connect with that deeper story. And I love how he invited us to think about the spirit as an advocate, echoing, of course, John. <laughs> The sense, though, that both the remembrance for us that we aren't alone. Not only is it the Spirit who does that in mystical fashion, but so often the Spirit does it through people with skin on, where we leave the light on for one another, where we, as in the story of Jackie Robinson, are willing to show up next to one another and ensure that life and love is possible one for another. So as we go forward into our week, we want to take with us some of these invitations. How does this connect? So how this week can you be a person who shows up in that sort of way? As a person who knows what it is to have that sense of I'm not alone and there is life and goodness here for me that we then share that one with another. Where might you leave the light on? As we contemplate this theme of a gathered community, some announcements I want to highlight. Today is a big day in the life of our church. We are having a church meeting 
to vote and discern whether the name we've had the past 75 years is uh, the name we want to keep moving forward. So every voice matters, and we encourage you to join us on the Zoom meeting at 11 o'clock. You can find the link at our website. Also, the Ministry of the Month is uh, Community Emergency Services, and we uh, invite folks to drop off non-perishable uh, foods at the church, and we will make sure that gets, gets to them. Uh, also, I want to invite folks right now to just a time of giving. Uh, we want to live generous lives, so whether it's our time and energy, uh, you could check out uh, ways to serve, volunteer, uh, to be plugged in on our website, or if it's financial giving, uh, go to colonialchurch.org forward slash give. Thank you for joining us during this time. Uh, we are very honored and grateful that you chose uh, to be in this space with us. Uh, we will continue to do this every week and we will co-create um, this, this space of worship. Uh, as we move on this week, uh, I hope we can find moments to reflect and pause and think about moments where the Spirit has shown up for us um, in our own lives and in our communities. So thanks again and many blessings this week.